a lot of challenges, man, but I just thank God that there's a name that I can call. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. <laughs> Make known his deeds among the people. I call him Jesus. That's Jesus, his name. Jesus. Jesus. That's the name. That's the name. I call him Jesus. 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 That's the name. That's the name. It's all. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Vader from Is He A Real One Radio, and we are here with yet another segment of one of our favorite segments, which is Real Talk with Big Little Bro. Who is Big Little Bro? That's me. I'm your Big Little Bro, and I'm just here to holler at you. I'm just here to talk to you. You know, it's it's kind of loud right here. You know, we having a function. You know, I, I smell the chicken. I smell the mac and cheese. I smell the cranberry sauce. You know, people talking, laughing. They talking about their favorite football team. Just kind of loud, man. Won't, won't me and you. Hey, let's let, let's step over here real quick. Let's step over here and holla at you. Because you and I spoke before. And I'm your big little bro. Sometimes you'll agree with me. Sometimes you won't. You know, sometimes you won't agree with everything, but you'll agree with some. But you know I'm your big little bro. So anytime I holla at you, it's coming from the heart. It's coming from the heart. I'm not here to hurt. I'm here to help. But sometimes help comes in pain. Ask the people who got surgery. Before we got in, before we get into it, though, I want to ask you to hit that like button. I want to ask you to hit that subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed to the channel. What are you waiting on? Subscribe to the channel. And also, I want to encourage you to leave a comment, even if all you do is leave a thumbs up or something. It helps us in the algorithm. Leave a comment. All right. So now that we've done that, Big Little Bro wants to highlight you. What are we talking about today? 
what I want to talk to you today is about considering the question of, am I the problem? Am I the problem? So, excuse me, this talk that you're having right now with your big little bro is derived from the episode of how important is love? Because one of the points that I made is I listed things that I believe is more important than romantic love. And I said, if a person checks all of these boxes or most of these boxes and you aren't romantically in love, you might be the problem. And I want to unpack that a little more. I want to unpack that a little more because here's the thing. As a single person and even as an engaged person or a married person, if you want to be successfully married, I believe that you need to get used to the possibility that you might be the problem. It doesn't mean you'll always be the problem, but I believe it should not be abnormal for you to wonder, hmm, am I the problem in this situation? Although I'm used to doing it this way. Oh, man, I know that's hard. I know that's hard. I know that's tough. But I believe as a successful. I'm not saying I'm a successful marriage person, even though technically I am thus far. But that's not what's giving me authority to to speak. I don't want you all to hear that. What I'm saying is just as a thoughtful person, this is just a thought process. I'm not even saying I do this right all the time. I might need to hear this video after I record this video. I might need to play it back. Matter of fact, my wife probably going to send it to me. Hey, uh, hey, won't you, won't you think about the fact that you might be wrong, homeboy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I probably shouldn't even do this video. Let me turn this off because now every single time it's a <laughs> that's funny. Every time we have a discussion, she's going to start playing this on the TV. That'll be funny. But anyway. Anyway, I'm not saying this from a place of authority. I'm saying this from a place of thoughtfulness that I believe we all should do. I don't believe that we can be a successful spouse without being used to taking into con taking into serious consideration that I might be the problem in this scenario. All right. You know, why do I say this? Because being committed to doing life with somebody. Better yet, being committed to doing life with another flawed person will expose your flaws. Whoever your spouse is or will be is a flawed person. And being intertwined with this flawed person is going to challenge you. It's going to expose your flaws. Even if they're wrong, it's still going to challenge you and might expose some of your flaws. Are you impatient? Are you less cooperative than you probably should be? Do you hold on to grudges? Are you not able to understand other people's situations? Meaning, hey, maybe this person is temperamental right now. Maybe they are a little bit on edge. But maybe you should have known that that might be the case. Maybe they had a long day. Maybe they just got some bad news. Shoo, maybe they just lost the video game. Is this really the time? You know, it. You know, wh whatever the scenario might be, but are you an under are you good at understanding people's situations or people's issues? How about this? Maybe it's not a, a scenario that I just painted, but maybe, you know, that a person is struggling in a certain area. How how well do you go about treating people? In knowing that they struggle in that area, how well do you do it? Do you just go, well, you shouldn't be struggling with it because that thing that you're struggling with is wrong. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess what? You know, uh, you know, your spouse is going to struggle with something. They're going to struggle with something. And all I'm trying to communicate is we need to be very used to thinking about the possibility of us needing correction in an area that is surprising for us to hear. So if you hear some constructive feedback that your knee jerk thought is to disagree with or to reject, I believe it will be an excellent skill set of yours to go. I'm going to receive that, even though this is hard for me to listen to. It doesn't mean you're going to agree with it. 
but it does mean you'll take it in and you'll actually receive it and receive this feedback that you're being provided with, even though you may have spent 20, 30, 40, however many years doing a certain thing a certain way. I believe we will be better spouses if we have the skill set of wondering if I'm actually wrong in this scenario. So are you impatient? Are you less cooperative than you probably should be? Do you hold grudges? And there are other questions that we can ask. And guess what? I said this before in one of my videos before. I don't remember which one. But your partner's answers to these questions matter more than yours. If you are a single person, won't you ask your exes whether you think they are jerks or not? Won't you ask them? Won't you ask them? Just ask them. See what they say. Give them feedback. Let them give you feedback. I'm sorry. You know, if you are not open to receiving this feedback, if you are not open to hearing that you are the problem in an area that surprises you, big little bro thinks that you might not be ready for marriage. In fact, I'll go a step further. I don't think you're ready for marriage. Sorry. Now, again, I'm not speaking from a place of authority. I'm not saying that I'm the perfect spouse, that this ain't got nothing to do with me. Matter of fact, if you listen to this and you're wondering about my credentials, first, I'm not a therapist. I'm not any of that. I don't claim to be. I'm just big little bro. All right. But if you hearing this and you're thinking, who is he to say this? Um, you know, is he married at all? If he is married, how long has he been married? You wondering whatever my credentials are? Again, a good skill set as a spouse is being able to wonder if you are the problem, not deflecting to the person who's giving you constructive feedback. Because if you do it to me, a dude who you listening to on YouTube, you'll likely do it to your spouse as well, because we are who we are. Our habits are our habits. You don't go, well, I'm only doing it to the dude in YouTube, but I wouldn't do it to my wife. I wouldn't do it to my husband. Mm -mm. We are who we are. We are who we are, bro. We are who we are, sis. So if we have the skill set of deflecting and making whoever's given us constructive criticism, the highlight instead of us being the highlight. That's a skill set for a, for a bunch of frustrating conversations in a marriage. So I believe we should have the skill set of wondering, am I wrong? Again, it doesn't mean you'll always be wrong. But it does mean that we won't shut people down when they're giving us some constructive feedback, particularly the constructive feedback that we might find surprising. Because when we are married to someone, when we are committed to doing life with someone, that person has a unique perspective on the type of person that we are. They have a unique perspective on our complementary attributes and our flaws. They have a more intimate relationship with all of these things. So they can provide a perspective that may surprise you. And some of it might be wonderful. Some of it might be challenging to hear. So I believe that even if you are not married, you should practice that skill set. Am I wrong? Am I tripping? Am I moving too fast? Am I moving too slow? Do I not ask the right questions? Is this my fault? It's a skill set that we should have. I'm not saying it's always your fault, but I am saying that it should not be taboo to examine ourselves. And that's also scripture. Paul said under the authority of the Holy Spirit, to examine ourselves when we take communion. Why? Because we're looking at who we are, the type of person that we are. What are our habits? Am I behaving Christ-like? If I'm not, I need to understand that, man, Jesus died for stuff just like this. Thank you, Lord. And this is why I'm taking the bread and I'm and I'm taking a drink in, in remembrance of what Jesus did for me because I'm a jacked up person who needs a savior every single hour, every single hour, just like the song says. Examine yourself. We should examine ourselves in marriage. 
And if we are not married yet, we should examine ourselves before marriage. So, you know, you will have feedback for your spouse as well. I'm sure you will. Just like your spouse will have unique and intimate familiarity with your complimentary attributes as well as your flawed attributes, you'll have that about them as well. And you can give them that same constructive feedback that may be surprising to them. That is true. But again, our first thought, our first, second, or even third reaction should not be when the mirror's on me and my stuff to put the mirror on somebody else. Now I'm thinking about my flaws or I'm thinking about um, the dude who's talking to me on YouTube or I'm thinking about, you know, whoever. I'm thinking about whatever their flaws are. We ain't talking about them right now. We talking about you. When the topic is me and my stuff, I can't be worried about you and your stuff. I got to be thinking about me. And after I've thought about me, if your flaws are relevant, then sure, we can have that conversation. But the response to, hey, you might have this problem. Shouldn't be, well, you got that problem. Let's actually talk about what our issues are and see if we can improve on them. That's Big Little Bro's thoughts on today. Consider the fact that you might be the problem. And remember, we don't start doing stuff just because we got married. We don't start doing stuff just because we're doing it now. If you're a bad steward of money, as a broke person, you're going to be a bad steward of money as a rich person and you won't be rich very long. If you lie about stuff that isn't important, yeah, you're going to lie about stuff that is important. If you have a hard time receiving constructive feedback and examining if the constructive feedback is accurate as a single person, you'll have a hard time doing that as a married person. And I believe that is something that you should correct as quickly as possible if you want to be successful at being a married person. If you want your spouse to feel safe, if you want your spouse to be more happy, they should be comfortable in sharing their constructive thoughts as well as their compliments. Hey, again, I'm not a therapist. You can throw this out the dough if you want to. Hey, no harm, no foul. But I am your big little bro. And I'm telling you this because I love you. I don't want nothing from you, but I love you. Peace.